Um, I still have a habit of swinging down. How could I naturally swing on a slightly uphill plane? Um, and how do I hit the outside pitch? Okay, outside pitch first. Biggest thing when outside pitch, again, a lot of it's approach, and you have to be willing to let the ball travel. You have to be willing to see the ball deep. Um, you also have to have the right swing mechanics. Or if you're a guy that if you're a guy that really gets outside around the ball a lot, you're not going to hit the ball the, very well the other way. But if you're a guy that has good mechanics and you can stay inside and you can stay through the hitting zone and through the ball the other way, um, and that has to do with again a whole lot of mechanical things, which I can't go all over right now. But go back and watch our videos. That's the biggest thing. Um, so that's the key to hitting the outside pitch. The whole swinging down thing. First thing is. Um, there's a bunch of different ways. There's a couple drills that I do. They're hard to explain on here. I've been trying to get a video out for you guys on drills, and it's something I've been really, really busy with, with now that I've come back to school and also uh, coaching. I've been really busy, and I haven't had time to make a video. Hopefully, I can make some drill videos. Um, but depending on what you're doing, what's, I mean, there's all different things that could be causing you to swing down. Um, and it's hard, again, to go through here. Go through the videos, but the biggest thing is... To have that thought process of being of being flat through the zone and letting your elbow get into its slot and then working the bat flat. I, obviously, it, it, I make it sound probably a little bit too easy if you're having trouble. It's it's a lot more difficult than just saying you know get your elbow slot and, and stay flat through the ball. Um, but again, it's hard to tell exactly. If I saw you hit, there might be something that you're doing. You know, typically, you know, I've seen some players that get way out in front, and once they get out in front, it's it's hard for them to then swing flat. A lot of them get out in front and then they swing down. So, you know, why are you continuing to swing down when you're not trying to? Maybe it's because you're doing that. Maybe it's something totally different. Um, it's not always the cause. You know, you don't, it's not like, oh, I'm swinging down. Okay, change your bat plane, obviously. Um, I'm swinging down. But what is the actual cause of it? In it uh, cause for it? It's like, um, you know, I have, uh, I have pain, let's say, in my knee or in my you know my low back I have pain in my low back well it's not always just looking at the low back and what's wrong with it but maybe there's a nerve or something up over here or in your neck that's causing that pain or referring the pain down there so it's the same thing with hitting like you're swinging down it's probably it's something else but again it's really hard for me to tell um, it's like you know say I'm a doctor and you have some kind of cold and you ask me to fix you and I don't get to check you. It's really hard to do that. So send me your video or go on our, go on touchmyball.com, our website, and uh, sign up for video analysis lesson. That will really be the way for me to help you. All right, really quickly, I'm sure I'm going way too long here. Uh, why do some pro hitters hit more home runs than others? Is it their swing? Are they stronger? Are they just better hitters? It's probably a combination of all, all of the above. Um, I don't always give... You know, everyone always says they're stronger, that's why they hit more. I mean, stronger than what? Stronger than a Little League player? Yeah, probably. I mean, they're a lot older. Um, so, yeah, strength, again, is, has something to do with it. But I always go back to the swing. And when I look at Major League hitters' swings, I, I think there's nobody better in the world. The majority of Major League players have the best swings in the world. There's a reason they're in the Major Leagues. There's too many people that think, oh, they're in the Major Leagues because they're bigger and stronger than us. Well... Why are there only certain people in the major leagues, and no matter how big and strong, I mean, there's definitely bigger and stronger college players um, than some major league players. Uh, there's bigger and stronger high school players. There's bigger and stronger 30-year-olds that are doing other jobs instead of playing in the major league. So it's not always about the big or their bigger and stronger thing. Um, but it comes back to the swing. It's like survival of the fittest almost. I mean, I always say the best swings get to the major leagues. And if you don't get to the major leagues, maybe you did have a really nice swing and technically a beautiful swing and you didn't have, uh, maybe you just weren't really athletic or you lack some type of skill. Sometimes good hitters don't get there because they can't play defense. I mean, there's all types of those cases. But in general, the best swings get there. And so I have a problem when, um, you know, high school coaches or what I would say, don't watch Major League Swings. Everything they do is, they're the exception of the rule, you know, they, their swings aren't that good, but it's because they have great eye, hand-eye coordination, or it's because they're big and strong, or it's because they're on steroids, that's why they're up there. I mean, I think that's, I don't think that's true. I think 99% uh, of the hitters in the big leagues are there because of their swing mechanics. Um, and yes, they have other tools and other abilities and other ta uh, talents, I guess, that help them get there but again I think it always comes back to the swing so watch their swings and try to take things from their swings that's what I do in my videos so go back to the videos again uh, let's see what are the heaviest 
high school bats through professional bats that are used. I swing a 34-31. Um, I'm a senior in high school. Okay. So what's the heaviest bat? I'm not sure exactly what the heaviest bat is. In my experience in, in, in professional baseball, I've seen guys use all different kinds of bats. I use a 34-inch, 31 ounce, the same as um, the same as whoever left me this question. Um, but there's all different kinds. I mean, I saw, I played with Adrian Gonzalez. He swung a 35-inch, 33-ounce bat, I think. It was pretty big. Uh, I know Josh Hamilton swings a big, huge bat. I mean, there's a lot of guys that swing a big, huge bat. Adam Dunn looks like he swings a big, huge bat. Um, but there's also guys, big guys that don't swing um, huge bats. So I think it's all personal preference. It's all whatever works best for you. As far as me, you know, I swung a 34-31. I swung a, a C-271. Basically, a smaller barrel bat. I could not swing a big barrel bat for whatever reason. Now, you could talk to somebody else and they say, oh, you know, I love a big barrel bat. So it's really all personal preference. So I wouldn't get caught up as much as what this guy's using or what that guy's using. Um, but what feels best to you? So try a couple different bats and see what you have the most success with. Just like I said, I tried a big barrel bat one year, I couldn't hit with it. I never use it again. Um, let's see. As a catcher, I'm worried that coaches will overlook me because I don't play. Catcher is a primary position. How will this affect me getting selected on my high school team? Okay, catcher is one of those positions where, um, you know, there's utility guys, but you, you rarely see a guy that's a utility guy that plays catcher in other positions. Sometimes you see it. In high school, you'll probably see it. But in college, typically, and then in pro ball, you, you really never see it. Because catch, catcher is such a demanding position, and you have to play there a lot to get good at it. I mean, and it's probably the most important position on the field, defensively. And so, um, you know, I technically wouldn't be worried about it, but if you want to be a catcher, you have to make sure you're spending a lot of time working on catching. So I wouldn't work on third base all off season and first base and then show up to the tryouts and be like, all right, coach, I want to catch today. I mean, if you want to be a catcher, you almost have to primarily be a catcher, and then maybe you can show them that you can play a little bit of third. Maybe there's another catcher that beats you out and say, hey, I can play some third too. And the more positions you play, the more value, valuable you are. But... Um, you know, if you want to play catcher, you've got to really, really work at catching. And, and you almost have to think of it as like, this is my position. I mean, I don't think there's many catchers that catch that, that play another position and say, well, I also can catch. Okay, go ahead and catch. Um, unless you go to a high school that's not very good. But usually there's always a few guys that are, that are catchers and they play catcher and they've played catcher for a while. Again, it's one of those positions where you have to play it a lot to get good at it. And then let me get to my last question here. I'm sorry I can't answer any more. Um... I know you are not a scout, but I'd like to get a, a job in baseball. How do I do that? Okay, I'm probably not the best person in the world to do to ask that question. Maybe in five and ten years, I'll be a good person to ask that question to. But I've always been I've always been a player in baseball. This is my first year where I've been coaching. And I'll just tell you quickly how I got into coaching baseball, and I cheated a little bit. I mean. This advice probably won't work for everyone, but I played baseball at Wake Forest, and then I went and played professional baseball for eight years, and then I stopped playing professional baseball, and I've always known I wanted to coach, so I got asked randomly, a few coaches, a few college coaches heard that I was um, not playing baseball anymore, and they asked me to coach, um, but then I just picked up the phone, and I called um, I called a few of my buddies that, was, that I had played with that were coaching, and I picked up the phone, and I called the Wake Forest coach, and um, that's how I got um, down here coaching, going back to school, is... Um, I told him what my plan was, and, and he said, basically, well, why don't you come down and help, help out the team and get your degree? And I said, that sounds terrific. So that's how I got into coaching baseball. Now, again, I'm not the, uh, an expert on how to get into baseball because I, I just did it through that route, uh, and I already had some connections. But I think the biggest thing is connections, and I think it's a lot easier if you have connections. If you, Not everyone has to play um, to get into a baseball job. I think it helps just because of the connections I've built uh, the relationships I've made over the years. I know a lot of people that are in baseball, so it makes it a little bit easier for them. Sorry guys, my video died. I knew I was gonna go over the limit. Uh, really quickly, I'll, I'll wrap it up in 30 seconds. It really is a, um, uh, a who do you know type of thing. And the more people you know, the more people in baseball that you know, it'll make it a lot easier. So go out there, make connections. Um, you know, I really don't know how else to do it. I, I'm sure you can um, get on the phone and call people. Um, you know, I don't know if that'll work, but uh, I don't think it'll hurt. And um, so you ask, you ask enough, and, and maybe you'll you'll get what you want. Um, so that's all I have to help you guys out today. Thank you for sending in your questions. If you sent it in, we'll do this again in probably a month or so, just so I can keep answering questions. I think this is the quickest way. Uh, hope that helped. Uh, share this video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you later.